That's actually nice. Do you not doubt my skin? I can do that! Ow! This is so exciting! Find a star! Hey everyone, this is SpyFan101. I'm here today to review the latest episode of Big Hero 6. Now, you might have noticed that Big Hero 6 reviews have been kind of delayed. And that's because of my editor. My editor sucks. Yeah, my Big Hero 6 reviews have been delayed. And that's because of my editor. My editor sucks. But, you know, my review for Big Hero 7 has been made. I mean, it'll take a lot of editing because while I was making that review, I had severe... Like, if you remember how Hero was during the Impatient Patient episode, that was me. So, I'm going to be editing that video, but if it doesn't come out, I'm just telling you my thoughts right here. Definitely the most disappointing episode of the season so far. I gave it like, I give it like a 6 out of 10. In that review, I was way too lenient, but in this one, I give it a 6 out of 10 because it was... Like, there was so much missed potential in that episode, and they could have done a whole lot more with that. So that's why I give Big Hero 7 a 6 out of 10. As you know, overall, it's just very disappointing. But this one, this one, gets it, back, gets it right back on track. It's not like Tangled the Series, where you have two good episodes and five awful episodes back to back. So... Yeah, so uh, yeah, this one picks it right back up. So, starting at the beginning, Fred is reading this comic book with Minimax called Human Fist. Now, if you were to ask me, I think that's a little Easter egg towards Iron Fist. But, um, all of a sudden, this big boom happens, and some a giant monster comes storming in to the mansion now we don't we don't realize the origin of this thing until the end of the episode but it's very interesting very interesting and I have a theory about it that I have a theory about it that I will put in the end so Maymax lunges himself towards it or is it the monster grabs Minimax, throws him away, like out into the forest or something. Fred throws a beanbag chair at it. He charges at Fred, destroys his room, destroys a picture of his father in the superhero costume. Him roars in his face. It's, the monster says like this quote, which it, we find out later in the episode is a Shakespearean quote. Then the monster just leaves, and then the and then Fred's mom walks in and says, "You didn't even get dressed," because they're trying to go somewhere. And it's really funny because she walks in, sees all the damage, and she said, and the one thing she says is, "You're not even dressed." <laughs> so after that, uh, Big Hero Six come in uh, to clean up his room. Mini Max is super damaged. He has like dents in his head head and dents everywhere. He is extremely damaged. We don't see him for the rest of the episode, by the way, because, you know, I guess he's recuperating. So, um, everyone's like, what did the monster look like? And after, like, oh, I got the description right here. I'll just let Fred say it for you. I'll just let, I'll just let Fred say it for me. Okay, so imagine if you put a whale and a dinosaur and some hair into a blender, then pour that into a human-shaped ice tray and froze it, and then let it thaw just a little. Wow. So yeah, that's the description via Fred. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> you saved me a lot of tongue-twisting words. <laughs> so, Gogo's having a hard time believing this. I mean, I, at first, when I saw that there was like a big monster that was coming. Yeah, I'll stall that first, but then I remembered, okay, this is the Marvel Universe. Of course, there are going to be monsters in it. But I was really surprised at, you know, what the origin was going to be because um, Big Hero 6 is doing this thing now where they're introducing more fantastical elements to it. And I think that will help the show further along. 
So Baymax scans the DNA. He comes to the conclusion that the DNA is not human, of course. And so, yeah, and so, um, he comes to, Fred says, oh, he must be one of my dad's old villains. Let me see if we can find him through all of the, through the listings of his villains. So we cut back to the lab and they're going through this giant, all these portfolios of uh, Fred's father's villains, which if you don't know who Fred's father is, he's Stan Lee. But um, they can't find anything. Well, I can't blame them because it's a big pile. All of a sudden, Gogo -Go and Wasabi come in saying, uh, you guys might want to, you know, brace yourselves because, you know, Professor Granville is not acting like herself. And then all of a sudden, she comes in with this SpongeBob SquarePants style <laughs> smile on her face. And Hero's taken aback by this. She, I mean, Professor Granville is really excited because there's this new visitor coming, and apparently she's a she want, came here to see Hiro Hamada right, because of Baymax, and so she wants everything to be perfect in the lab. So she's trying to fix everything, and all of a sudden, Carmi comes in and says, and she wants to show her inventions to this girl and you know Hero's taken aback by this too because she because he's like you know she's here to see me then Carmi goes up to his face and says then she'll be very interested to what I have and all of a sudden she comes through the door with Professor Granville and she goes up to Baymax puts his Puts, puts, his, puts her face into his carbon fiber, carbon fiber skin, if you will. Looks inside of him. He asks, he sh oh my God. <laughs> Why do I keep saying he? She asks Hero, how did you make him? And then Hero messed up by saying, well... I didn't make him. My brother Tadashi did. Which, I think that if he didn't say that at all, he would have did. He would have. Um... Sorry about the cut. I'm working on the low battery here. But I feel like if Hiro didn't say anything at all, he would have gotten her attention. Because in the sequel, he did technically build Baymax again. So yeah, I know Tadashi did build him in the first place, but, you know, Hiro did rebuild Baymax, so technically he built him. So yeah, anyway, now because she, now because he said that, She's not really, she's not interested. So, she she starts to walk away, but then she sees Carmi, and the invention that she built is basically a sticker. Forget like the exact abilities it has, but yeah. So she takes that instead of Hero's thing. And Hero is jealous of Carmi. And he has that jealous face on him. And of course, Gogo -Go sees this. So we cut over to Kratek. We see Alistair looking at some pictures of himself, all egotistical looking. And then the big monster comes in, wrecks his entire office, and says another Shakespearean quote. Now, at the time, we don't know what this is and then the robots come out start shooting at him the invisible robots from the I believe it's the um, aunt cast goes out goes out episode yeah I think that's it I think that's the one so yeah the monster destroys those with ease uh, Alistair calls 
Big Hero 6. Then the next scene, he comes, Alistair's telling the Big Hero 6 what he saw, and it's the exact description that Fred gave. And so, at the end of the day, they, they have new information. There's an ad on Disney now right now. Hold on a second. So, uh, yeah, I find that um, this is really interesting because I feel like if they, I'm just on until these ads are over, but I feel like if they really, if they really, like, implement this into the future, then it could, like, it could be something, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <sighs> Sorry about the cuts. I had to take a super long pause because I had to wait for the camera to charge because it kept turning off. So, back to what I was saying. So, the video 6 arrived. Alistair Cray is telling him what he saw, and he basically gives the same description as Fred did, did and how, you know, he said the Shakespeare poem and everything. And be, for some reason, Fred is wearing like this, these necklace of garlic on his neck, which is kind of weird. So we cut back to the lab. Baymax walks into the lab. Hero is building something. And we don't quite know what it is yet. But then we find out in the next scene when... Um, I forgot her name. The lady that came here to see Hero in the first place. She's having lunch with Harmy. Hero walks in on their lunch break, I guess and shows her this new invention that he made and it's basically a thermometer but for drinks and so Hero's feeling unmotivated because he pretty much embarrassed himself in front of this woman and he's saying he's saying to himself oh well well this is pretty much pointless I'm not gonna win her over and the whole team just comes up with the fact that he is just jealous of Carmi. And he keeps trying to reject this even though it's a fact that he's jealous. So they get a lead on the monster where they're gonna be and where it's gonna be. So they go there, so Hero, Honey Fred and Baymax go in with their souls to see he goes to the house to see what's going on. Uh, and they, not to mention they found out who the monster is. Which uh, is a guy named Orson, I think, I think. Or maybe I'm thinking of um, Iron Fist Season 2 because of, you know, Orson Randall. Anyway, I think his name is Orson. So, they go into, the ho into his house. It's all messed up. They're investigating to see if they could find anything in terms of where you're going to be next and they find um, all these appointments that he has has and every point that he's had is every place that he's went to so to his Fredrickson's dinner he went to um, Fred's house Craig take meeting he went to um, Alistair's office office hours so that means of course that he busts in at this moment and he fights the Big Hero 6. Now, well, not the Big Hero. The, t the members that are there. So, he's they're fighting the monster. And, of course, they don't win, even though they do try. And Baymax goes into overdrive mode, which is... Oh, actually, in this shot that I'm looking at right now, it looks real... It looks so... It looks so cool. 
Like it's that scene where he he's like crouching down like this and he has the sword going like Whoa. Yeah, it's awesome. So he drives the monster away. Um, Baymax runs out of battery because, you know, overdrive mode drains his battery. So, once they go back to Fred's, Fred's place, Honey makes the distinction that all the things that he's been saying are quotes from Shakespeare. So, they find out where the last place he's going to be is. And they realize that it's at S-Fit. So, Hero's like, you know what? I've made some adjustments. So, over the course of um, researching Big Hero 6, the series, or just Big Hero 6 in general, I've seen that, um, multiple times I've seen, like, these variant suits that are on, like, action figures and stuff. Where their suits were like all black. Black or gray. And I was like, okay, this is an interesting variant, but that's something we're probably never going to see. But in this one, we finally saw them. And they look good in action. They do. They really do. So after they suit up in their new suits, they go undercover to the S-Fit party. Where... The woman is, and of course, Professor Granville's making a speech. Speech, and while Professor Granville's making a speech to everybody at the party, the monster shows up and starts to wreak havoc. So the Big Hero Six are obviously trying to stop them. Gogo and High Lemon come in, trying to get everybody out of the area, and so Hero Baymax and wasabi they're like flying around the place cutting off the roof of the tent and that everybody's in or that everybody got evacuated out of and after that happens since they try to conceal the monster monster and you know it seems like it worked but then it busts out of it and it almost starts to attack the lady and then Carmi puts her sticker things on it to basically knock it out and pretty much Carmi saves the day well Big Hero 6 obviously saved the day but Carmi saved the day as well and so we get a little tease at the end of this that she's going to put you know Orson into a facility where he should be fixed and turned back into a human, obviously. And then the episode ends with, you know, Carmi and Hero building some kind of bond. Ugh. And then it ends with Hero like bumping into Baymax because of the shine in his helmet. Then the episode ends. Now, that that review seemed really jumbled, I know, but you know, I just woke up and I'm a little, you know, disjointed because all of these times I've been trying to make these reviews, you know, there have been tech problems, like I've tried to film this like several times, but the camera kept dying and then tried to edit the last review but then my editor sucks so I wasn't able to do that and it's just all these problems and it's just really annoying but this show is so good that you know it makes me feel better about this whole thing because I like I love this show I love Big Hero 6 in general so I love to talk about it but overall this one was definitely a vast improvement from the last episode because the last episode was just really disappointing, but this one was definitely a lot better. It had better developments, better realizations, just better everything. So overall, I'm going to give this episode a 9 out of 10. And just in case the Big Hero 7 review doesn't come out, I'm just going to sum it up with this. Yeah.
the last episode gets a 6 out of 10, very disappointing. This one gets a 9. So yeah, peace. Thank you, promise. Wow, 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 wow. Bro, 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 bro. On our way. What's going on? You might want to stand back. <laughs>